Our guest in the studio to kick things off is businesswoman and finance journalist Margaret E. Ward. Margaret, good afternoon to you. Good morning. How are you doing? Uh, you're probably... Uh, good afternoon, actually. Oh, uh, afternoon. Uh, unless, unless oh, I lead, just woke up lead now, some yeah. sort of dissolute lifestyle. <laughs> uh, just rolled out of bed. Came in here. You're probably delighted about that development in Pyongyang. That's that's a major I'm, step yeah, forward I'm for women thrilled. everywhere. It really is. Yeah, yeah. That, you can ride a bicycle in urban areas. That's great. But that's do you have to you. wear trousers or a skirt? Well, or a yeah, hat? That, there had been. Well, they, 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 apparently they'd said that uh, riding a bike while uh, um, wearing a skirt or a dress was against socialist principles. That's a new one on me. That's a new one on me. Absolutely. And I, I, I can't wait to get home to my copy of, of Das Kapital and see what say, Marx wrote about And I'd like to see the black and white photos from that time as well, yes. you know? <laughs> Apparently they only brought him because some uh, a general's daughter was uh, was riding a bike in the 1990s and was hit by a car. So they just decided to ban it for everybody. Why not? Yeah, Why go not? for it. You know. makes, but apparently, uh, I'm told, he also legalized pizza and women wearing trousers. Wow. So I think now, the images that are in my head now, Sean, are pretty frightening. Well, women, women cannot, on a bicycle wearing trousers, eating pizza, bringing in the pizza middle of home. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a it's a totally Western. They're yuppies now. Yeah, That's I mean, you could are. you could start a whole delivery service around that. Pizza yeah. Hut should be in there, really. Uh, Great opportunity. There. Yes. I can't quite see that happening yet. Though the the, the new, uh, uh, whatever his name is, uh, uh, he looks like he enjoys a pizza. The new head of North Korea. He so, might just uh, enjoy um, pizza. And now bicycle delivery girls wearing yeah. trousers bring in pizza, three a.m. Uh, 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 can we start with Julian Assange? Uh, because uh, your country is persecuting him. Uh, uh, <laughs> my country. Yes, of so, course, it's all for my which fault. you have to take personal it's responsibility. It's fault. Yes. <laughs> Actually, all military action that ever took place from the United States or any persecution, it's definitely it's all my fault. G Actually, do you get that a lot all the time and in newsrooms and yes i've gotten that since i moved here 17 years ago where people would feel and, that you and, have to defend and i'm a democrat it. i'm yeah. a democrat by the way yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah that i it's all and my fault democrats bomb people too <laughs> <laughs> i think you'll find anyway aside do, do you uh, uh, how how sympathetic are you towards them well i mean i think you know wikileaks I think it was a, a great concept and, hmm. you know, bring on more freedom of information, more freedom of documentation, more data. Um, the way he did it, I think maybe uh, he could have been a little smarter about it. Um, but I think that if this guy is being investigated for rape allegations, he absolutely has to answer those charges, whether he owns WikiLeaks or not. Yeah, because I suppose that's 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 the point. He he's maintaining that if he gets to Sweden, that this is really just a kind of a, 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 a dodge to get him back to the States. But, but I, I mean, will Sweden really extradite him to the well, United that's, States? That's a, well, one wouldn't have thought, thought the Swedes would be more upstanding than I would than think that so. Kind of thing. I think it's a bit of a, I'm such a victim. Look at me. Look at me. He seems to like attention. Mm. And maybe this is just another way of trying to wheel out of the charges. But those are serious allegations that have been made against him. And if he is, you know, if he's saying he's not guilty, then why doesn't he just go and answer those charges? Yeah, I don't yeah. see what the issue is. Yeah. He's, 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 he's not really above the law. You yes, know? indeed. Uh, um, and anyway, I, d I don't know what, what his plan is for. I mean, he's not going to sit in the Ecuadorian embassy for the rest of his life. No, maybe he likes the music or something. I don't know. Well, uh, they're not great fans of a free press either. No, uh, they're definitely not. Uh, uh, interestingly enough, so uh, I don't know. But if they're saying that they're victims now as well, and then it's all about colonial oppression and how dare the British threaten to storm their embassy to take Assange out. I mean, they're right about that. You mm. can't go changing the rules just to suit yourself. Either, either you know, a diplomatic uh, mission or an embassy is sovereign territory of that state around the world, or it's not. Mm. Uh, that was probably rather foolish for the for the Brits to even imply that they might do that. Yeah, that, and it, it does come across as strong arming. Probably not very good for relations with Latin America either. Uh, yes, uh, I would have thought so. Uh, what do you? Uh, it's, uh, it seems we are talking about uh, uh, the United States, and it's all your fault. Uh, uh, um, uh, Paul Ryan. <laughs> Paul Ryan. Well, this apparently is, you're married to Paul Ryan. This is really frightening. But I've had a few of my very good friends say, "Oh my gosh, your husband looks just like Paul Ryan." Yeah. Ooh. Now, keep in mind, like, that is really terrifying to me. Am well, I sleeping with the enemy? Sure. Uh, well, Paul, uh, well, I mean, it could also be taken as a compliment. Paul Ryan is a, is a handsome man. Uh, he, apparently, he's, he's uber fit. He's, yeah, uh, he's, he seems he's to be. He has freak. some insane, like, workout regime. And it's all about, you know, very extreme workout regi regime. He's very strict with his diet and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, look, you know, no, I'm not for Paul Ryan. <laughs> he might look like my husband, <laughs> but he's, he's a rabid Republican who is very much against women, um, and against a lot of things, you know, and I, I just, I find him reprehensible, frankly. Oh, would he be, though, uh, would he represent, because, I mean, he's been, he, he, I mean, you know, he's, he, 
he's against gay marriage, he's, he, he, um, um, uh, he's against abortion. Uh, you know, there's a kind of play, a Republican playbook that you'd expect him to take stands on. Well, those, but, now hang on, to be fair to the Republicans, those are conservative Republican yeah. playbooks. We're not talking about regular mainstream Republicans. I think a lot of mainstream re Republicans would say that, you know, abortion, there would be people who are Republicans who are pro-choice. But yeah. I mean, somebody like Paul Ryan, <clears throat> from what I understand, he voted against equal pay for women. The mm. Lily Ledbetter uh, legislation that was one of the first things Obama signed when he came into office. You know, he's anti-abortion. You know, all these things I think that are are all about just um, promoting you know rich white guys in the United States and saving them as much money as possible on their taxes. That's really what the current um, Republicans running for uh, pre the presidency and the vice presidency are really all about. If you sit down and you look at their policies. <laughs> Well, actually, that was my question, really, in the sense that uh, uh, Romney, there may have been a, a certain amount of doubt uh, about where he stood ideologically, given that in, in some of his history, he seemed to be a pragmatist. He brought in a kind of a version of Obamacare himself. Um, but there's no doubt about where Ryan stands. Uh, there's no and, doubt about and, it at and, all. And Ryan uh, would be on the libertarian wing of uh, end of, of republicanism in the, in the United States. And, and But because that's such a popular choice, does that actually mean that... He is now mainstream. He is. He does represent mainstream, the mainstream Republican no, Party, because it's taken a shift to the right. No, I think that um, mainstream Republicans have decided to sit out this election because they know that there are so many conservatives that are in charge of everything mm. that they're just going, you know what, we'll just let this one go and then hopefully things will settle down and that we'll become a little more, you know, back to what we used to be in the Republican Party. So I think they're just letting the, you know, ultra conservatives run this election and hopefully lose. You mean they've just given up? I think they have. A lot of people that were asked to run for president said no because they knew that they would have to, you know, do a lot of jumping through hoops for the conservatives in order to to get the nomination. Yeah, but 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 that that in itself shows just how powerful they are now and how how for the moment. not just the P party, but you know for the moment. I mean, I honestly think that they have gone so far to the right that they're they're not going to win this election. Mm. I mean, that's, you know, of course I'd say that. I'm a yeah. well, well, Democrat, you know, I love Obama, bring it on, you know. Yeah. But I, I just think that that's what the mainstream Republicans are saying. They're kind of saying, yeah, well, let them, give them enough rope, you know, to let them mm. hang themselves. Really. Uh, well, if you see, at the same time, Ryan is a smart fella. And uh, Ryan has, uh, has, uh, doesn't just criticize bills, he drafts alternative ones. He uh, does. Uh, um, so, you know, the, 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 there's something constructive there about what he's doing. Uh, so you can't just accuse well, him of being a... Well, I mean, constructive. A... This is a guy who also, he wants to get rid of Planned Parenthood. Hmm. I mean, get rid of it entirely, just so that there's no information out there whatsoever. Hmm. You know, I, I mean, look, it, you know, we're chalk and cheese. There's no way that I'll ever, you know, yes. want to see a Romney, Ryan, uh, you know, ticket win. Uh, but, but given that, uh, it, and it becomes incre seems to be increasingly the case, case in states, that it's very polarized. It really boils down to a few swing states. And as I understand it, not even the states, actually. It boils down to a few counties yes. uh, that actually uh, d d denote what's going to happen in, at the end of this election. And so then those few counties, will they be swayed by some uh, a policy position Paul Ryan has or does it come down to sound bites and things like when, you know, Obama made the speech about um, you didn't make that uh, business by yourself, you know, people who made roads and et cetera, et cetera. He was trying to, you know, uh, say, give the it takes a village thesis. But of course, that was taken out of context. And it looks like he's anti-business. And it's though. Uh, and on the other side, there's, you know, Mitt Romney's tax returns and he's destroyed businesses. It comes down to a few little bat sound bites like that. Yeah, really, I mean, the unfortunately, the there's no such thing as really exploring the legislation or the issues or the stances or having a proper debate. It is all down to sound bites. It's down to commercials that are being shown in those states. And I think Romney is doing extremely well in terms of fundraising mm. um, and the Obama campaign. You know, you constantly get emails saying, please give us more money. We're being outspent in all the key states. So it will come down to that. And that is a worry, you know, in terms of the amount of money that's being spent on advertising mm. billionaires pledging money to, uh, you know, Romney and Ryan to get the message out there. And what's frightening is, you know, I think like the electorate here, people are not as educated or interested as they once were in the real nuances of politics and what it means and what these people will do once they get into office and it's more like a you know a hollywood trailer or something yeah is it a is it a particularly dirty campaign do you think not yet not yet yeah not yet it's not as dirty as it can get right because it's you know one gets the impression that it has been, it's been pretty dirty so far i think it will get worse uh now you are a dyed in the world democrat uh, uh, have you been happy with obama 
Um, not a hundred percent. I think that when he got in there, there, you know, there was a lot of hype and a lot of promises. We were all very optimistic about what he would do, and I think he just stopped talking to people for a while, and that mm-hmm. allowed the other side to kind of get ahead. Now, of course, he was obviously so focused on what he could do in terms of policies and what his priorities would be and all that. But um, I think he let a lot of people down by by just stopping that kind of communication. Mm. But I think we all sent a, felt a great sense of ownership um, with Obama because of his rhetoric, because of the language that he used. It really made you feel you could, you know, pick up the phone and give Barack a call and have a little yeah. chat about, you know, <laughs> upcoming legislation. <laughs> and I think that they missed a trick there. You know, they missed something like establishing that intimacy with the American public, and then they just went silent for a while. So, mm. no, I mean, it hasn't been a perfect presidency, but... You know, we did expect a lot, and he had a lot to battle against in yeah. terms of the Republicans and, you know, the onslaught of the everybody, the Tea Party and everybody else coming after him, hell for leather. Uh, was he naive? I because don't think I, no, so. I well, don't so think much so. Of his, so, much of his, uh, so much of his rhetoric, uh, I remember seeing him, the first time I ever saw him was actually on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. Uh, um, which, yeah, which, you know, and this is not disrespect, not meant as disrespect to the American media. There's many other things I could say disrespectful about the American media. But his interviews are actually very good and, and, and quite insightful. But he came on and he was very, he was a very relaxed Obama. He, there was less of that professorial thing that sometimes yes. he gives off. And he talked about, you know, how, uh, uh, Capitol Hill is such a partisan place and people are playing both sides and adopting positions. And he, and he genuinely obviously wants to get rid of that. Um, but that's easier said than done. And if you're an experienced politician, you know that's easier said than done. He didn't seem to realize that. I think perhaps. maybe he thought he was going to bring people with him on this wave of optimism and change and hope. And, mm. you know, I mean, keep in mind, you know, Americans are a hugely optimistic people. We really genuinely believe that in our bones, that you can make things better, you know. And the United States still has that Kennedy uh, thing going on, and yeah. you know, which is ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And I think that Obama really felt that maybe he was the next person who could make that happen. Happen. And you saw these little um, initiatives that they do once a year, you know, a community day. So everybody should volunteer in their community, y- you know, and that the things that his wife has been doing as well to just get the American people to focus on working together again as a team and moving towards something that is positive as opposed to the destructive se- things that you see in Washington. So, you know what, I don't think he was naive, but I think he was genuinely hopeful that he could be a catalyst for change. And unfortunately, it hasn't turned out like that so yeah. far. Because, uh, you know, and then the way this uh, this campaign, it's, you know, we're still months away from the actual vote. Uh, but, you know, the Obama, uh, uh, Obama's packs and super packs are fairly nasty at this stage of the game. And it's almost like, well, I've learned a lesson there. Uh, and he's gone back to playing by the rules that he didn't really approve of yeah, the first time. I, no, I think that's true. I think he was being too nice and he was being ripped to shreds. And then they changed tack and they said, you know what, we've got to start fighting back and start fighting back harder, faster dirtier it's not nice it's not a nice thing to watch but is that you know the kind of things they're still saying like the emails you see going around about how he's muslim yes you know and this is taken as fact by a huge percentage of the american people yes you know and there was something there was some guy who came out um i think it was this week and he said uh he's a obama's a muslim and i hate him you Mm. know i mean hello incitement to hatred uh, well uh, he is you know he's a muslim socialist yeah, I mean, Pardon this me. is it. Oh, yeah. And he's Europeanizing, you know, oh, that's so bad, that's being actually, in Europe. You know, and you know, that's a funny thing that I, I, I noticed. I, I actually, uh, sometimes late at night, uh, uh, when I can't sleep, uh, I, I watch Fox News to torture myself. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, and, um, so because on news stories, they're not bad. If it's a straightforward news story, you know, they're very good. But mother of God, they, I watched the O'Reilly Factor. Now, Bill O'Reilly is a, a reptilian, loathsome individual. He wasn't actually presenting it. It was his number two, a black guy. I don't know his name, Juan something. And it was an hour-long show. He did five minutes on... on uh, that uh, uh, Biden's gaffe about uh, um, they'll have you all in chains, y'all. Uh, that uh, <laughs> brilliant one. Oh, lovely. Everybody looks forward to that debate between him and Ryan. But uh, uh, so he said, "Well, may- there's talk that maybe Hillary might replace Biden on the ticket." So he talked to a Democratic spokesman, roasted him for five minutes. But it was a good kind of news night type interview. Uh, and then the, the, the next of the 55 minutes was interviewing Republicans with kind of, "Don't you agree with me that Obama's a socialist?" type questions. Yeah, was- and there's more and more of that. 
Yeah. You know, I really is and talk about, OK, you know, politics is divisive, but the American media has become more and more divisive. I mean, you, now you kind of go, what am I watching? What is mainstream when you're watching American television? Yeah, what is it's, it? hard it's very hard to know. Yeah, and, and, but, I think and, the American on, people are confused as on, well. On Fox, Europe has become. That's uh, a dirty word. That's a dirty word. Europe just yeah. means socialist hell. Yeah, that's right. Uh, anyway. Because we live in a socialist we country, We live in a socialist we? hell. Yeah. We certainly and, do. And I can't ride a bicycle in downtown Dublin. You no. certainly can't. Anyway, uh, we have to take a commercial break. Myself and uh, Margaret have to salute our Fuhrer. Uh, back in a couple of minutes. 53106 is our text number that will cost you 30 cents. You can follow us on Facebook or Twitter or send us an email to afternoon at newstalk.ie. Margaret E. Ward uh, is still with us. We have been talking about um, uh, politics in the United States for the most part. Uh, one texter says, I'm a fan of Obama, but the man won a Nobel Peace Prize before he even did a wet week in office. Uh, yes. Yeah. That was silly. Uh, that was silly, yeah. Uh, and he hasn't done that much since then. What about closing down Guantanamo? That's a good point. It's a good point. He did uh, promise. And he did promise. And, uh, well, again, it, it seemed to be so much that he, he did look at it, but it seemed to be more difficult than, uh, than he'd realised, so... Well, it's my fault. Again, it's my perhaps. fault. It's uh, that different. would be your fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah you should have fault. told them. Um, uh, Sweden has extradited people to the US in the past. Assange has not been charged with anything, but he is wanted for questioning. He has said he will travel for questioning if he is given diplomatic assurances by Sweden that he won't be extradited. That's interesting. Uh, the, uh, and uh, it's okay for well-known stars of the film and music world to host fundraisers for Obama. But business people dare not contribute to a Republican candidate. Talk about hypocrisy, says Laura. I don't know. I, that wasn't really what Margaret was saying. She was just pointing out, as a matter of fact, that that uh, Romney is um, that the Romney campaign is is uh, r uh, raising far more money than the Obama campaign at the moment. And uh, unfortunately, in American elections, that tends to be uh, quite an important factor. I would have thought. I'm also told that last week, Gwen Stefani hosted a tea party for Michelle Obama. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. Was that like just to give her money or she just wanted to give her a cup of tea? Or maybe I, give her some of her bit of both. Like, fashion. Didn't she have a fashion label for a while? She's pretty cool. Gwen. Michelle Obama or Gwen, Gwen. Gwen Stefani? All Gwen right. Stefani. Okay, right. Okay. She could, you know, give her, you know, some of her black biker gloves and stuff that we've seen on videos. That would be cool. That would be, yeah, that would be very helpful. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if it would be exactly the right look. No. Uh, uh, um, Going with the J. Crew for, yeah. outfit and the gardening <laughs> shovel and the wellies. Uh, no, wh what work. do you think of. The Rosa Tralee competition. <coughs> well, as, I've been a, as, a, as an American, uh, uh, in between in between your busy schedule of bombing other countries, uh, um, <laughs> uh, uh, as uh, as a woman, as a feminist, uh, uh, what do you think? Um, I think my opinion of it has changed. Mm. Uh, Seventeen years ago, when I moved here, I thought it was appalling. Mm. I just thought this was like a Miss America pageant, and it was uh, exploitation of women and an excuse to, you know, have them parading around half naked in bikinis. But it, well, I don't think they've ever had bikinis. Well, and yeah. that's what I didn't realize yeah. when I first moved here. Yeah. To be fair to them, so um, and then I started watching a little bit of it and kind of hearing more about it and thinking, actually, this isn't half bad. You know, I mean, if you have um, women like um, Avi Nisilawan who works for this station, who mm. is like a mathematical genius, you know on and women who are extremely um, accomplished in both their professions and in their community and all that kind of thing and they're up there talking about real issues and it's not a oh look at me in a bathing suit campaign well I don't completely object to it mm. you know I think it's it, if it opens doors for these women you know to do things that they want to do or to help others then isn't that terrific I mean it's a bit it's old-fashioned like, come on. Yeah. You know, it is like a lovely, lovely girls parade. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I think the favorite, the Dublin Rose, is a, a PhD a student in physics. Mm. Like, fantastic. You know, go for it. I was actually, uh, when I first came here, a cousin suggested that I enter the Rose of Tralee. And I was extremely insulted. <laughs> extremely insulted. But now. But now? But, well, now I'm way too old. And I would never have done it in the first place. What would your special but, um, talent be? <laughs> you don't want to know, Sean. Oh, I do want to know. You don't want to know. No, you definitely don't want to know. Oh, I do no. want to know. It's yelling at Fianna Fáil politicians for bankrupting the country. That's my special skill. But I think we all have that special right, skill, don't we? Yeah, 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 you didn't want to know. No, that wouldn't really. No, fit really. It. But you see, but, but okay, they're 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 all smart and accomplished women. If yeah, they were smart and accomplished women in, in bathing suits, would it make that much of a difference? Yes, I mean that's complete objectification of people. But so this is just mild like, objectification. Like, for example, of like what? Well, what if we had um, political candidates here had to parade around in um, you know speedos for election? <laughs> what do you think of that? 
Would that be great? <laughs> that would be quite funny. That'd be actually. quite frightening. Uh, 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 that. And completely, yes, disgusting as well. No, but the, but, but the point is, it's still you still have a competition for women where one of them has to be better than the other. Uh, uh, and whilst okay, they're not in they're not in bathing suits. They're appearing. Why don't we have a debating competition for women? Well, yeah. Wh why do we have a specific competition for women? Like there, well, there isn't a, a there isn't a bloke of Trilly competition. <laughs> uh, the, the the thing is, is like, oh look, let's see what the girls can do. Oh look, she stands up on her hind legs and everything. Isn't she fantastic? <laughs> let's check her teeth. Isn't it a, we still a wee bit patronising of women because they've got their own little? Oh look, what they can do. It is a bit. Like I said, it's old fashioned. You know, mm. it is of its time. It is of its era. I wouldn't shut it down just because. Oh well, maybe. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I think like a lot of things in life, you have to go, well, look, it has its own history and culture and a lot of good has come from it and it really helps that community. I mean, I'm sure it's a huge business boost for them. Yeah. Um, I think it is a little bit outdated, a little bit old fashioned. But, you know, at the same time, isn't it? It's nice, too. And it's, I think it makes us all feel good. And you're learning about all these amazing young women. And mm. you know me, I want to see as many amazing women out there as possible. You know, uh, it, more it does, involved in public life. It, it does seem to have a, 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 a be much more special for immigrants, uh, almost like families yeah. come home who might be generations away from Ireland, but they come home as a way to kind of say, "Look what we did." Yeah, and I, again, that's something that I didn't understand. You mm. know, up until say a few years ago when I really started paying attention, and even when you look at the photographs in the paper now, I think we have what the Dublin Rose and the Cork Rose, and then the rest of them are all from all over the world. Yeah. That's what some of the photographs seem like. So it's nice. And look, if it's, if it's a way of generating publicity for Ireland and to bring immigrants back to Ireland spending their money, yeah, I'm all for it. Bring it on. Margaret, lovely to see you. Thanks for coming in to us. Margaret E. Ward.